Kiana is one of the highest skill cap champions in League, and she also has one of the most game-changing ultimates. Well, most game-changing for now, but who knows what kind of stupid champion Ryan are going to add in Season 12. But I have found a player who plays Kiana AD Carry, with a special strategy that makes her and her support actually impossible to hit in laning phase, so you can't even return damage before you get one-shot by Kiana's insane burst. They are also the number one ranked Kiana in NA, even though they probably don't have much competition. This is not some super complicated Korean combo build where you have to play perfectly right on the edge of danger. This is a unique custom made strategy that's overloaded with damage and options, so you can jump right in and have success. If you really want something OP, then let me show you our sponsor for today, Porofessor. Porofessor is an overlay app for League that gives you so much information without even needing to tab out the game. During champ select, Porofessor automatically finds you the best runes, and you can even directly import pro players' runes to your client. Once the game starts, Porofessor scouts your opponents to show you important stats like how good they are at their champion, whether they're auto-filled, or even if someone likes to roam a lot so you know that you need to watch out for them. In loading screen, you can see an analysis of your team comp, showing your strength and weaknesses as a team. Sometimes in game you just choose to randomly group up with your team and you win a fight without knowing why it worked. Or you split push and you just win the game solo. A feature like this tells you which kind of play is a good idea before the game even starts, helping you figure out which option to choose. In game you have the Porofessor overlay, which updates live as you play. It lets you compare yourself with other players in your rank, which really helps you figure out which areas of your game you need to improve. The feature I think is the best is actually the looking for game tab, where you can find players that are a similar rank to you, or want to play some fun team comp on Discord. You can add them directly and get playing. It's much easier than using like an external forum, because you know these guys are ready to play right away. Download Porofessor for free from the link in the description. Support the channel and help yourself. Our player today is named Claude. They started playing League in Season 4, learning the game and getting into ranked, starting off in Silver. In Season 5, in one of those Silver ranked games, Claude met someone special. Their name was Sticklad, and they met while playing Annie mid with Jarvan Jungle. Their solo queue game went so well with this combo, after they won, they added each other and decided to start duoing. Level 2, Annie would get her stun ready, Jarvan would go mid lane and hit a guaranteed combo on the stun target. Together they would carry the game through mid lane. Over time, they became friends and joined a voice chat to get better communication. Next, they joined a 5v5 team and continued to build up their synergy, both finishing in Platinum that season. In Season 6, Claude decided to join an amateur team, swapping to support and taking the game more seriously. Since he was putting in so much work in this competitive team, he even climbed up to Diamond 2 in solo queue. His friend, however, did not play much. They duoed at the end of Season on fresh accounts, again with Claude hitting Diamond. In Season 7, both players actually took a big break from League. They moved on to WoW Arena, specifically the 2v2 mode. They love creating strategies in this game without having teammates to rely on. This set them free to be as creative as they wanted, forming team comps and strategies to counter the meta, even at the top of the ladder. Every game they would adapt to their opponent's plays, changing builds to counter them, and inventing new ones that people had never seen. They actually hit top 20 on the 2v2 WoW ladder, so they were surprisingly good at theory crafting. So when they both returned to League in Season 9, they wanted to do the exact same thing, create some OP combos and destroy the meta. Their first duo was Cassiopeia Pike bot lane, sounds pretty fun, where they would rush to level 2 and immediately all in. With Cassiopeia's early damage and Pike's early CC, they'd use all their summoner spells and get kills almost every game, setting themselves up to carry. Their next combo, Pantheon Jungle with Maokai support. This combo set up very easy point and click ganks, carrying their team to victory, helping Claude hit Diamond faster than ever before. When they weren't playing ranked, they would be spamming normal games together, mostly playing bot lane. This started with playing tank supports, playing aggressively for kills in lane to get snowballing. But then it evolved into another special combo, Lee Sin with Tarek bot lane. If Lee Sin ever hit a Q on an enemy, the Tarek could press his stun and guarantee it would hit. By season 11, their style had developed even further. They thought back to Garen Yumi in previous seasons and were inspired by it, playing Vega Yumi, Zed Yumi, Fizz, Katarina, Trindamil, testing them all bot lane. Then one day they tried Kiana Yumi. The combo felt great and Kiana as a champion allowed Claude to continuously reach for the high skill cap, learning more every game. This combo was special. Yumi works great with champions that have an invis like Twitch or Shaco. She can sit on them and also become invisible. So this is what their whole playstyle is built around. All of this testing was in normal games and using this combo they managed to hit very high normal game MMR, playing versus grandmasters and challenges in every game. They did keep winning but of course it was just normal games. They don't prove much right? So they went on to ranked with the same combo. Just to be clear, up to this point, Sticklad had not even been in Diamond. They always stopped climbing as soon as one of them had hit it and he just never made it, which makes the next part of the story even crazier. Starting on fresh level 
30 smurf accounts, they hit diamond, with an 80% win rate, no problem. As players got better, they were worried their strategy would falter, and often considered swapping champions to pick something that fit their team comp better, but they knew that no one could carry games as hard as Kiana, so they stuck with it. Throughout Platinum and Diamond, they said they would kill the enemy bot lane in 100% of games, but as they reached Master, the difficulty ramped up. After 76 games, with a 74% win rate, carrying the games in their promos, Kiana AD Carry hit Master tier, with Yumu following closely behind. There is one big reason why AD Carry Kiana works, and that is her ability to go invisible with her green Q, and this is vital to their laning phase. Mid Kiana cannot use this as often, she's always fighting in the centre of the lane, so it's hard to reach multiple bushes in a fight. But bot lane Kiana has three bushes in the lane to use, and a couple in river, and then even two bushes behind the tower where she can grab it from. Kiana has her grass Q ready at all points prepared. You can press it just before being hit by CC, it makes you go invisible immediately, and the crowd control will do nothing. This mitigates a ton of damage in bot lane, and you should never die 2v2. It's just like if a Kali shroud went off whenever she got hit by CC, you'd never be able to lock her down and find her before she could escape. At level 1, their first strategy. The duo run out of base, jump this wall toward Tribush. They can invade early to let Yumi hit her Q to proc mana flow band. In lane at level 1, the duo do nothing. They sit out of danger and wait. They do want to get XP and they do want to get CS. But most important of all, they want health. They do not want to take any damage. If they lose health, then their game plan falls apart completely. Losing a few CS for this doesn't matter. Starting W helps with this, as it gives you an extra dash to dodge skill shots and keep your health high. In harder lanes, Yumi is the one who needs to carry this early lane, with her trading, using shield and W back to avoid damage. She has health potions so she can trade her life for the enemies. But the wave will always push towards you, so patience is key. At level 2, they keep last hitting under tower, using Kiana Q if needed for multiple CS, otherwise they use it for extra poke. This whole time Yumi should be trading with Q and harassing one enemy target down, ready to kill them. Ping and choose one enemy to focus. So then at level 3, you get your huge power spike. The enemy should now be at 70 or 80% health after your poke, and they shouldn't have any potions left. Kiana goes all in with a standard EQ, WQ auto attack combo. The first E makes your Q impossible to dodge. It'll always shoot out immediately right at the target you've dashed on. Ignite during this first EQ, this proxy electrocute, and reduces the enemy healing, meaning they're healed as close to nothing as they can't heal before you go in. With this combo, the enemy AD carry will die most games, because the damage is too fast for the enemy support to react and protect them. If the fight looks bad or you're getting ganked, Kiana has a special escape combo. Use your invisibility shroud, walk behind the enemy, use your E to get through them towards your turret. Yumi then uses the speed up on her E, and Kiana dashes again with W to escape. Speaking of using shroud, this combo is one of the most broken things in the game. Look at this. Kiana goes in doing a lot of damage, but enemies can't even touch her to trade back, and they can't even see Yumi. Kiana stalls for her cooldowns to come back up, uses stealth again, doing more damage, and then simply just walks away. They can't deal damage to Kiana, they can't deal damage to Yumi. What can enemies even do in this fight? At this point you can even take 3v3s or fights in the river as they're great for Kiana. Most AD carries are not yet ready to fight, but Kiana is already power spiking. At level 6, the inevitable kill combo is unlocked. I say it's inevitable, as once you press the two ultimate buttons. The enemy AD carry cannot fight. They need to flash away or they are dead. Yumi especially is incredibly strong at this point. Kiana can just dash forwards into the enemies, turn her brain off. Yumi presses her ult. The enemy AD carry can no longer DPS or they will get rooted. Then Kiana ulted and die instantly. Enemies must flash the Yumi ult or they'll get full comboed. After level 6, if enemies are walking out of tower range, then our duo go for this combo. Otherwise they have full bot lane priority and can roam up to mid and jungle as needed. They can even tower dive enemies with ults, so often AD carry is not even safe there. One strategy they use to bait enemies to walk up is invading tribush. You pretend you're not in lane, and you wait for enemies to walk near the wave. Then they kind of just slam their keyboards to get a kill. Yumi ult is even dodged in this fight, but Kiana can still hit the point and click combo into ult. In mid game, Kiana and Yumi move to mid. They let the mid laner go to bot so they can push the wave, but being mid lane lets Kiana and Yumi roam all around the map. You want to be collapsing on people who are out of position, joining up with your jungler, or even kill enemies mid if they walk up too far. From here, choosing where you fight becomes very important. The places where Kiana ult is easy to land are areas like Baron Pit, Dragon Pit, and fights in the jungle inside choke points. 
Fights in open areas are almost useless for both Kiana and Yumi. There are no ways to push people into walls, and there's lots of space for enemies to dodge the Yumi ult. So fights around Rift Herald and Dragon are your favourites here, as well as invading kills in the jungle. A lesser known Kiana mechanic is using your ult in river, even away from a wall, which creates a stun wave. I have no idea why this is still in the game, it feels like one of those extra unneeded mechanics that Riot should remove, so that Kiana ult has a kind of weakness. But this is Riot Games we're talking about. They don't really like to add counterplay. So yeah, you don't always need to ult a wall. This works in the river and inside bushes, which can get you an engage when there's no other option. The best way to teamfight on Kiana, just like any assassin, will always be to flank. Get behind enemies and surprise them with a huge burst engage. Alternatively, you can create this surprise using your stealth. Here, Kiana uses W stealth to avoid being in vision. The enemies don't know where she is, and they're being forced to walk in through this choke point to contest a dragon soul. Kiana ults and does her combo, instantly killing two enemy carries, and then just walking away. She chases Camille down with the healing from items and from her Yumi, Kiana is now unkillable in this fight. Another thing to think about when you're fighting is where the Yumi is and what you can do to help her. Fighting isn't something that Yumi can do by herself. You want to be tracking where Yumi is and figuring out where she wants to go so you can take her there. One click backwards to pick up Yumi can be the difference between a huge engage or going in alone and getting one shot. On Kiana, your ult is not just an engage but also a disengage tool. Kiana's mobility actually feels quite limited when you play it, even if she does have a lot of dashes. But your ult is an extra safety tool for when you need it. If you're being chased, you can use ult to CC enemies and gain distance, then consider your options. You don't always need to be running into a group of people, you can just disrupt the enemy's play and lock them out of position for your team to kill them. As Kiana, you always want to be ahead. If you're behind on an assassin, you won't one-shot enemies and you'll become useless. So Claude and Stickman realised it was incredibly important to win lane and start snowballing the game, which inspired this aggressive playstyle. The main counter to the strategy is tanks, including tank bot lanes, but they've created a special build to remove this counter completely. They call this build the Exodia build, where Yumi and Kiana build items to be able to kill every champion in the game. This starts with Eclipse on Kiana. Prowler's Claw is great, but leads to Kiana having overkill damage against Squishies, and not enough damage against tanky champions, meaning he will kill Squishies no problem, but then he'll be useless. Their new build fixes this. Eclipse's mythic passive is Percentage Armor Pen, so when paired with Sherelda's Grudge, you can actually kill tanks and bruisers in Kiana's ult. Combo this with Yumi's items to reduce the enemy healing and buff up Kiana, the combo cannot be matched by tanks or bruisers. This Eclipse build makes Kiana a lot tankier in teamfights, allowing Yumi more time to heal her. With the build, you survive any burst damage, allowing you to take extremely extended fights to get more damage off and get through any champion you need to. Kiana's full build starts Longsword, 3 potions for extra sustain. First item, Eclipse, into Serpent's Fang. Serpent's Fang is a great value AD item that has the added bonus of being good against shields. It's not only built for shields at the moment. Next is Sherelda's Grudge. With these items, you can one-shot squishy champions and still get through tanks. Yumi's build is quite normal, starting Spell Thief's two potions and using them to trade aggressively. He buys Dark Seal next into Moonstone. Second item is almost always Chemtech Purifier to cripple the threats Kiana has trouble with. From there you have a few options. Most of the time they go Staff of Flowing Water for more ability haste. And Mikhail's is great to protect Kiana from CC, letting her run freely around fights. Here are the Kiana runes, most important is Electrocute for damage and Presence of Mind in secondaries to fix Kiana's mana problems. Claude says that taking this rune means you don't need to buy a tier, last stand most games or cut down against multiple tanks. Yumi's runes are actually very similar, even taking the same secondaries, they must really love this combo. The real counter to this strategy now that tanks are not a problem are abilities that give vision. Common ones in bot lane are Kaisa W, Karma W, Lulu E, Thresh Hook. If these abilities hit, then Kiana can't really dodge damage as well as she wants to. Exhaust is also very good against assassins like Kiana, cutting her damage. It is much less common in high elo bot lane than ignite is, as enemies take ignite to force kills in lane to get a lead. But in this situation, if enemies don't take exhaust against Kiana, they're going to die for certain, and then their disadvantage will continue, dying one to two more times in lane because they still don't have the summoner spell. The easy matchups are against poke supports like Zyra, Zerath, Velkoz, Brand, Janna. Yumi is a better poke champion and a better healer than these champions, so they can outlast. Pretty much all lady carries will die to Kiana's combo, so they don't matter as much. So can you play anything except Yumi with Kiana? Yumi is a vital part of the strategy, and she causes a lot of the power that Kiana has, to get ahead and then to carry games. AD carry Kiana can be played solo or with another support. Aggressive supports or poke supports will be the best to combo with it. You want to keep the exact same style, working with your support to poke one enemy down and then all inning them with your level 3 combo. I do think they could have got Master with another support, but I don't think it would have been anywhere near as high win rate 
great. Thanks again to Porofessor for sponsoring this video, please give it a try, my link is below in the description. Claude and Sticklad both have Twitch channels, so check out their duo streams, link in the description. I'm also streaming off meta on my Twitch, like Kiana AD Carry, in Diamond 2 at twitch.tv slash happy chime noises. I predict quite a lot of dodges this week.